Hello. Uh, we are joined this evening by Professor Mauricio Arauja, who has flown in here from uh, sunny Brazil to join us in London this evening. Uh, Professor Arauja will be giving a lecture and leading a workshop for 50 clinicians here at the Royal College of Physicians in London alongside Professor Nikos Donos. And Professor, Professor Araujo is, uh, is well known for his groundbreaking research in the field of uh, ridge alteration following tooth extraction. Um, so what I'd like to do is just ask a few questions, Professor Araujo. So um, could you answer why do we see more resorption at the buckle rather than the lingual? Well, Richard, following tooth extraction, the amount of resorption, bone resorption is the same at the lingual and at the buccal aspect of the ridge. However, at the buccal aspect, the buccal bone wall is very thin, it's much thinner than the lingual wall, meaning that if I have the same amount of osteoclastic, osteoclastic activity at the buccal wall, there will be the complete removal of the buccal wall and the flap will collapse in to the space of the alveolar socket and by that you're going to see more deficiency at the buccal aspect than at the lingual aspect of the ridge. Well, the predictability of the ridge preservation procedures is connected, is associated to first to the anatomy of the alveolar socket of the alveolar process. What I mean is the following. When you have an alveolar socket that's within the envelope of the bone, we have a much more predictable outcome. In comparison to the a alveolar socket that's outside the envelope, so we have a, a less predictable because in this situation, quite often, the buccal bone is very, very, very thin. It's so thin, it resorbs so early that before resorption, the granules of the graft we have to perform in this technique is not surrounded by woven bone. Thus, it's more or less loose in this healing tissue. And you may lose all this graft material and it is not going to promote any bone formation. Second point, that you should be able to perform the surgery correctly. So we have to be, uh, you have to get a, a kind of a training. All the socket preservation is very easy. It can be performed by general practitioners, but you have at least to know some details. How to remove your tooth with a, in a minimally invasive way without break the thin buckle wall, how to clean the socket, and how to place your graft in such a way that can be properly, it can be properly fill the socket space. Well, ridge preservation is always indicated. However, in some situations, you may do something beyond ridge preservation. For instance, if you have a patient that uh, from the very beginning has a very small alveolar process, so small that it doesn't make any sense to use that ridge to support a implant, then you, have not, you should not do only do ridge preservation, but you have to augment the site. In the same way, when you have a patient with a high static demand, you should not only be um, uh, satisfied with the original dimension of the patient. I think it's safer if you increase a little bit, just that you can consider the variability of biology. Well, that you preserve the site, that you may need that volume. And if I go back to your previous question, when you ask me if you, you, we always need bead preservation, there will be sites like molar sites that has no aesthetic impact, that even after the reduction 
uh, post-extraction post resorption, the amount of bone is enough to place an implant, right? So you don't need to do reed preservation. However, in the anterior regions of the mouth, falling tooth extraction, there, if you leave a, uh, a normal, a conventional healing process to take over, the amount of bone that's left falling socket graft healing, or I mean socket healing, is so limited that, that you cannot place an implant and have the proper volume. So in this situation, you have to do rich preservation. And if you don't preserve, if you don't preserve, then in the future, you have to do a more expensive surgery. You have to take, uh, it will take longer to heal. Everything will be a little bit more, more complicated. Including potentially a, a sinus lift procedure? Yes, because of course you don't not only preserve the buccal lingual dimension, but also the apical coronal dimension of the alveolar process. And by that, you can prevent sinus lifting procedures. Well, my preferred choice is a non-resorbable biomaterial, highly osteoconductive, and biocompatible, as is the case of BIOS or BIOS collagen. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that you have to use a non-resorbable biomaterial, because otherwise, then we have a host bone, and host bone can be bone modeled by your body, and it's, many, um, it's not meaningful, the surgery.